Today, we're talking about the fall of one of the biggest names in the industry, Boosted Boards. Boosted was a game changer, revolutionizing the popularity and accessibility of electric skateboards. In a way, they even inspired BKB. But as many of you already know, the company didn't make it. Boosted filed for bankruptcy in March of 2020, and considering all that came before their downfall, many simply wondered, what happened? I personally saw this coming about six months before their closure. Now I'm gonna break everything down and show you what can be learned from it. After a highly successful Kickstarter campaign that raised $467,000 in 2014, Boosted launched their first generation of electric skateboards. These boards were an instant hit, gaining popularity for their easygoing design, impressive performance, and ease of use. With the first generation of boards, Boosted set the bar high for what an electric skateboard could be. It's hard to overstate the impact that influencers like Casey Neistat had on the growth of Boosted. Neistat frequently featured Boosted boards in his videos, showing off its impressive ability to carve through the NYC streets. And his enthusiastic endorsement helped to drive the interest in the product among his massive audience. It was his endorsement that actually made me want to build my first board. As we covered in a previous video, I never ended up actually getting a Boosted, but instead built my own DIY board. And this unofficially started BKB. This is actually Jared's first board that he ever built. Kind of cool to have this here to see how much everything's changed. Boosted wasn't content to rest on its laurels. In 2016, they launched the second generation of electric skateboards. These new boards featured improved battery life, more powerful motors, and even better handling, solidifying Boosted's place as one of the top names in the e-skate world. Two years later, in 2018, Boosted expanded their line even further with new board designs, ensuring that they stayed ahead of the competition and continued to stay relevant in the market. Despite their early success and impressive product line, Boosted's fortune began to change when they opted to expand in the electric scooter market. Boosted's foray into the electric scooter market was a highly anticipated move for the company. In 2019, they announced the Boosted Rev, an electric scooter designed for urban commuting. With a sleek design, powerful motor, and impressive range, the Rev was poised to be a game changer in the scooter industry. However, things didn't go as smoothly as Boosted had hoped. Production of the Rev was outsourced to China, which led to unforeseen expenses due to tariffs and timelines. The cost of importing the scooters into the US was much higher than anticipated, which caused financial strain for the company. Boosted was forced to make some tough decisions, including cutting staff and delaying the launch of the Rev. Despite these setbacks, Boosted continued to push forward. They eventually released the Boosted Rev in the summer of 2019, but the scooter didn't generate the same level of excitement as their electric skateboards, with the rising competition in the scooter market and the mounting financial pressures the Rev couldn't save Boosted from their eventual downfall. In 2020, the once promising future of Boosted had taken a bleak turn. The company announced that they were letting go of their team and actively looking for a buyer. Fans of Boosted were stunned as the company had been the leader in the electric transportation industry for years. Their downfall can be distilled to a primary lesson. Scalability must be carefully managed. Boosted boards grew rapidly, while this helped them reach a wider audience and increase their impact, it also led to them being blind to the potential dangers that increased costs could have on their business. In a twist of fate, the rental scooter company Lime ended up coming to Boosted's rescue. Lime purchased some of Boosted's patents and other assets, helping ensure that the company's innovative designs would continue to make an impact on the transportation industry. The majority of Boosted's assets remained with a company called Boosted USA, which sold the remaining inventory. The acquisition by Lime was bittersweet for Boosted's loyal fan base, as a majority were disappointed that the company would not continue as its own entity. But with the sale of the patents and assets, there was a hope that the legacy of Boosted would live on. In the end, Boosted's story is a cautionary tale about the challenges of running a successful startup. Even with innovative products and a loyal fan base, unforeseen obstacles can arise and threaten a company's success. Boosted may be gone, but their impact on the industry will be felt for years to come. What would I have done to prevent the bankruptcy of Boosted if I was in their shoes? After the development of the Rev was complete, I think it was already too late and the story was written for Boosted. 
They had already spent so much money developing a product that people just didn't want to buy because it didn't fit what they needed. It was too heavy and it was too big and it was too expensive. But before the launch, they had raised a huge venture round. And this wasn't good because it allowed them to just needlessly spend money on the development of the Rev and not actually make something that the customer wanted. Many people were excited for Boosted to diversify into the electric scooter market, but they invested all of their time, resources, and money into the development of the Rev, which eventually led them to put all of their eggs in one basket. And this basket did not work out. Diversification is usually good, but too many resources were put into a product that was untested by the market. It's easy to say in hindsight, but before the Rev was even developed, I would have went out and did more customer research and had a more final product before taking it to production and talked to the customer more to see if the product was too heavy, if it was too expensive, if it's what they actually wanted. And I think this definitely could have saved Boosted. How does Boosted's bankruptcy affect the decision-making of BKB? Boosted ran like a traditional San Francisco startup with a huge venture round and lots of money to develop a really good product. BKB takes the complete opposite approach without raising money and investing everything that has been made already back into the business. We have a very intimate relationship with our customers where we have immediate feedback on what they do and don't like. And this is shaping the future of what BKB is going to be releasing soon. Hey. He was, was faster than my cinematic pen. He was, he was.